money. Hello. Now, it's my second time. And, uh, um, and I would like, of course, to, organize, to, to, to thank the organizer for, the, for this wonderful meeting. And it's a little bit unfair for me to speak after Jan without BBC on my shoulder, but so I will try to, to, do, my, to do my best to entertain you. And, and well, uh, and also the, the, the subject of my talk is a little bit more, let's say, boring in, in the idea of the people, because plants are something that we perceive as completely passive organisms. And I will try to show you that plants are, on the contrary, uh, intelligent, very complex organisms able to, uh, to start uh, incredibly difficult, incredibly complex strategy to survive. Well, let's start with some fact. I'm sorry, that, but I have to show you some fact that it's some about the amount of plants. I don't know how many of you know that uh, uh, almost the totality of the biomass on the herd is made by plant, or at least by, let's say, in general, veg vegetal. And uh, uh, from, there are different estimations, but they, they, they range from 90 to 99.5% of the biomass on Earth is made by plants. So, in other words, we animals altogether are just a very small fraction of life. And our life is totally dependent on the life of plant because all the food that we eat is produced by plant. All the oxygen that we breathe is produced by plant. Most of our energy is produced by plant. 90% of the medicine that we use are produced by plant. So we are totally dependent on plant. Well, what we know about this wonderful world is just a small fraction of... OK, let's have a look at, the, at a general uh, idea of plant. Uh, and uh, so plants are sessile organisms. What, what I mean with sessile? means that they are rooted. They cannot move. Or at least, they move a lot, but they cannot move from one place to the other. They cannot displace themselves. Now, try to imagine for a, f for a few moments to be a plant. So that means to be rooted on the ground, you have no possibility to escape. And around you, there are just predators that want to eat you because you are at the basis of the food chain. How can you survive in these conditions? How is it possible that plants survive? Well, first, they have a body that is completely different from our body. There is no other possibility to survive. We have our, uh, let's say, last common ancestor between plants and animals, last 600 million years ago. 600 million years ago, the animals and the plants, they took two different tracks. Okay, one group, the plants staying rooted on the ground and, receive, and using the energy of the sun, and another group, the animals, going around looking for energy. Now, the plants are the, the source of energy for all the animals. So all the animals want to eat you. Your body needs to be built in a different way. For example, you cannot afford to have any organ, any single or double organs. If you are a plant, you cannot have one stomach, two lungs, one brain, two eyes, and so on. Because every organ, it's a weak point. So just imagine to have a plant with a stomach, a brain, or so on. And every predator, not a big one, it's enough to be a caterpillar or an insect, eating a little bit of, your, of an organ, it's enough to kill you. So this is why plants have no organ. Plants distributed all the function that the animal concentrate in specific organ in, in, on the whole body. Okay? Well, uh, let's have a look at some movement of plants. This, this movement, it's, uh, this movie, 
has been done in the uh, 1898. I mean, uh, this means a few, uh, few months uh, after the invention of uh, uh, cinema by Lumiere brother. It's fascinating to think that this guy, this botanist, Willem Pfeffer, uh, just a few months after the invention of cinema, used this technique, modifying a little bit and producing what we call today the time lapse, just to show how plants move and behave. Okay, so this is a, this is a movie of uh, uh, the, the, the Lumiere time. Today we have a much better uh, techniques, of course, and so, and we know that plants have a, a, a number of movement. This is a very, it's a very fast movement. It's the, the movement of a, a Dionea, a Venus flytrap. This is a kind of animal plant. So this is why you can see this very fast movement. But every plant, this is a bean. Every plant move a lot. So f until few few years ago. This, this is, these are the movement of a couple of hours, not too, mu not too much. Uh, the, all these kind of movements were called tropism. Today we know that uh, this movement that we saw are a kind of scanning uh, of, of, of the environment for the plant to know how is the, the, the environment around them. Okay? Because, oh, look at this one. This, uh, it, it's a, it's a, uh, a young sunflower and uh, 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 growing in two days. These are, are just two days of the life of uh, sunflowers. And, and you can see that they move a lot, no? So there are no doubt about that. They move a lot, and what they are doing, using a metaphor, as uh, Jan was suggesting before, they are playing. So it's very difficult to, to use uh, animal term, or a terms that has been studied, has been produced for describing animal behavior and translating them to uh, the world of the plant. But uh, if we think that uh, the play is uh, at the base of, of the relationship in animals, so they are, they are doing the same. So they are building relationship among them because Sunflowers are social plant. There are social plant and there are uh, solitary plant. And uh, so, are the plants able to sense? This is one of the, per the first point. Well, um, uh, until a few years ago, the position of science was that one. This is a Gibson. James Gibson is uh, it's a, an incredibly uh, important, preeminent scientist in ecology of vision. And you can see that he was writing that the plants, organisms that lack sense organs and muscle is not relevant in the study of perception and behavior. And after, at, uh, at the end, plants in general are not animate, that it's false. Uh, they do not move about, that, that's okay, we saw it's not true. They lack a nervous system, it is true. And they do not have a sensation, it's also uh, incorrect. In this respect, they are like the object of physics, chemistry and geology. I think it, it's, it's quite an odd statement. Uh, and uh, and it's, what is interesting is that it's the, real, the, the truth is that it's completely the opposite. Plants are much more sensitive than animals. And the, the reason it's trivial because animals, they have a big, uh, the, the, the big answer to, uh, to all the problems of animals is to, to escape, is to run away. When something is changing in your environment, the first stereotypical response is to move. So in the case of plant, you cannot move. In the case of plant, the only possibility for the plant to survive is to sense that something is changing in your environment very early. And this is why plants are able to sense at least every single root apex is able to sense at least 20 different chemical and physical parameters concurrently at the same time. And 
And among them, there are uh, parameters as, of course, gravity, water, salinity, temperature, sound waves, heavy metal, electric field, magnetic field. So a lot of parameters, a lot of uh, uh, that we, are, we animals are unable to sense. So plants are, in general, much more sensitive than animals. Among the, 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 the things that uh, the, the ability of plants, one of the less known is that they are able to perceive sound. So in, in this case, we have a source of sound of 200 hertz, and we can see how the roots, they turn toward the source of the sound. And uh, uh, because 200 hertz, you can ask why they like this 200 hertz. 200, 200 hertz is, a, is, the, is, the, is a peak in the spectrum of the running water. So it's very relevant evolu evolutively from, for plants to, uh, to, to sense this, uh, uh, these frequencies. And uh, um, in a few, uh, couple of years ago, two Chilean scientists, Gianoli and Carrasco Ura, they described an almost unbelievable ability of a plant. The plant is this Bocchilia trifoliata. It's, it's a very well-known uh, wine growing uh, spontaneously in, in many places of the temperate forest of Chile. But what is uh, unbelievable about that plant is that this plant is able to mimic, it's a wine plant, so it's a plant that is able to mimic the leaves of the tree is growing on, but not just one tree. So pay a little bit of attention, because this is a kind of unicum in the living world. So this plant is able to change the shape, the color, the thickness, the texture of their leaves, so that's mean of their body, according to the tree is growing on, and not just one time. So, if one plant of Bocchilia trifoliata is growing on, on a first tree, start to imitate the leaves of the, this tree. After, it can pro prolongate to another tree and imitating the leaves of this second species, growing on again and imitating the leaves of a third species. So this means that there are at least two mysteries here. One is how can a living organism manipulate so rapidly the shape of their body. That it's a big mystery, and it's something that we, at the moment, know nothing. So we don't know how it's possible. But you can see that, I, maybe it's not so clear here, but this plant is able to produce very different leaves. Very different. I mean, in shapes, texture, thickness, uh, size. It's also able to produce kind of spines if the, the, the tree where it's growing on is a, a, a producing, producing spine. It's also, um, and, the second, and the second mystery is to, to be able to, to mimic something, you need to know the model that you want to mimic and how is it possible. The, the, the first explanation by uh, Carrasco Reggianoli was that they were able to, uh, to sense some volatile, and in, in, in this way, they, they had a kind of database, more or less, of the plants that they were able to imitate. But this was not the case, because they, this Bocchilia trifoliata is able to imitate even plants that it was never in contact before, in his evolutive history. So, uh, what we propose, is that this plant is able to see. And when I say see, it's really having vision, so uh, 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 perceiving shapes. In, uh, by looking at that, we found uh, that at the beginning of the last century, Gottlieb Haberland, is this guy has this a little bit crazy, crazy face, but he was a uh, one of the most brilliant botanists of the time, he proposed uh, that plants had actually the, the, the ability to see. And, and he said, uh, also, he proposed also the mechanisms. It was because the, the, 
the, some specific group of cells on the leaves were so convex and focusing the images on, on, the, on, the, on the understoring layer. And, and you can see here, uh, this is a picture uh, of a lady taken by using as lens these specific cells of, of the tree. Well, we, we recently published something uh, just showing that it's true. So plants are actually able to do that, at least that plant. But it's very, uh, it would be very, uh, very weird to, 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 to see, to know at the end that just the Bocchilia trifoliata is able to, to use this ability. Well, uh, my time uh, finished. I, I want just to, to, uh, to tell you that we are just at, at the beginning of the, uh, of the discoveries that we are we, um, in, in the plant world. So until now, uh, we, uh, we look at that plant as a not cognitive, passive, uh, almost linked to geology organisms. And, uh, and on the contrary, they are a different form of intelligence. And I think this would be uh, incredibly interesting to study because intelligence must, is not necessarily linked to, to a brain, but this will be a matter of uh, the future. Thank you very much.